Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel is for you. So what I've got on the bench this week, well, it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Yeah, see what I'm doing is I'm reworking this uh, woodworking bandsaw to do metal cutting. Uh, with a little help from a friend, I did some machining on this 10 and a quarter inch pulley back here to replace that much smaller one. Um, and I'm also gonna be powering this with a treadmill motor uh, to slow it way down and give me some adjustability on the surface feet per minute of the cutting. Um, it's taking up the whole bench, so I'm not going to clear this off to try and shoot something else this week. Um, I'm mentioning this saw because I've got to three. I've got to design and 3D print a control box for the speed control for this. So this is going to be a future video, uh, if not next week, probably the week after. But instead, this week, what I want to do is actually recognize an unsung hero of the production of Functional Print Friday, and that is this tripod holder right here. I use this guy every single week to hold the, the, uh, the old iPhone uh, that I use to shoot Functional Print Friday. Uh, and this is not my design. So here's the actual designer of this. It's Jake Jake on Thingiverse. And I'll bring this page up when we take a look at the, uh, the design files for this in more detail. Uh, and I will link to this down in the description below as well. But before we do that, let's take a look uh, at the actual tripod itself and talk about some of the features that I really like about this one. Because there's a whole bunch of these available uh, on Thingiverse uh, and uh, the other STL uh, sites that are out there. And the reason I chose this one, well, it's a couple of reasons. Number one, I love that it's toolless. You have just a thumb screw to tighten the phone down into position. So if we loosen this, see this phone will slip right out. Tighten it back up. When we tighten that back up, we're actually pushing this lower base down onto this spring that is designed right into it. So you have a little bit of give. It's not like you're trying to, to clamp the phone smaller uh, to get it tight in there. That spring gives us a little bit of leeway so that we can get it in there nice and tight to hold it uh, but not risk breaking the 3D print uh, or damaging the phone. Uh, the top clamp is captive to the nut. What I mean by that is, if we loosen this guy up, it's gonna take that top clamp with it. It printed first try without any adjustments. All the clearances were good. Again, just props to the designer. And uh, I will bring up that page and uh, again, uh, feature Jake Jake from, from Thingiverse. All right guys, and here's the Thingiverse page that I got this from. Again, the designer is Jake Jake. All credit goes to Jake Jake for this design. And he's got some other cool designs as well. In fact, I've seen this hand screw clamp, uh, I think featured on the Thingiverse front page. And at some point I collected it, but haven't actually made any yet. That looks really cool. But you know, guys, I've mentioned this before. If you find a design like this from somebody and you get a lot of use out of it, and I've printed two of these for my own personal use. I've given a couple away to friends without 3D printers that are looking for ways to mount an iPhone on a tripod. I've got a lot of mileage out of this design. I, I really appreciate the work that he put into it. And I've said this before, when, when that's the case, throw, you know, show some love, send him a couple bucks. It could be a dollar, honestly. It, it adds up. If everyone that got usage out of uh, somebody's design like this, send them a buck, it, <laughs> they'd probably be more, a, lot, a lot more likely to share their designs. So we're gonna send them five bucks. Jacob Stanton, if you're ever watching this video, Thanks for the design, much appreciated. And we'll put right in here, let's see. Featuring it this week. All right, again, thanks Jacob. Okay, so here is Jake's design for this. And I wanna just touch on a couple of the things that I think make this such a great design. So if you take a look here, again, you can see that sprung section and it's actually encapsulated in here. So it's allowed to move, but stays within the constraints of the main backbone here. So I love the fact that that's print in place and captured and the thought given to these items laying against the print bed and printing. That threaded section, we don't need the threads all the way around. So notice it's just partial threads on this side, partial threads on that side, which gives us a, a completely flat surface on the back here uh, that would go against your print bed. Uh, same thing for the top clamp piece. Uh, notice this slides within this channel here and you have this flat surface down here on the bottom. There we go, this one here and this upper edge up here to go against your print bed. And then this guy just slides this direction here and it's captured in place. And then the nut 
So when you're putting this on, by the way, and he's got a video that shows how to assemble this, but you slide it that far, uh, pop your nut over that nub down there in the end, and then start your nut, and then this top piece stays captured on there. So it will automatically move up on its own as you loosen that nut uh, to get you know a different size device in and out of there. So I, a lot of thought given to the design, and I really appreciate it. I don't know if uh, I don't know what Jacob does for a living. Maybe he's a professional designer, but. Um, if he's not, he's one heck of a hobbyist because I appreciate, again, all of the elements that went into this design. So I think that does it for the design. I guess the one thing that I should also mention is there is a piece of hardware required for this. It's a quarter inch by 20 nut, and it's a slim nut that's required for this. I will link to one of the nuts uh, on Amazon that's easy to purchase. But if you're like me and you've got a, a, a drawer full of screws someplace in your, your garage or shop, you've probably got one. Quarter 20 is a pretty standard size. I fished through for, I think, only about 30 seconds in my, my drawer of uh, spare nuts and uh, was able to find one with no issue. So um, shouldn't need to buy one if you've uh, already got some spares of uh, stuff lying around. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time here, I do a new video every single Friday. It's either a design of my own or a guest design that I feature that solves a problem around the shop, around the house, makes something easier, makes something better. And again, I publish a new one every single Friday. So if you do choose to subscribe, uh, I will see you next Friday.